Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem I'm going to be showing you today. We're just basically going to be using the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of this function here, f of x equals the square root of x squared plus 1. Um, and I wanted to show you this question in particular because it can be challenging sometimes to use the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of a function that includes square roots. And a lot of them end up working out pretty similarly. Um, I've been talking in my videos recently about a book called The Calculus Lifesaver by Adrian Banner. That book addresses this concept as well and kind of goes over it, so I wanted to touch on that same kind of explanation just like they do in that book. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into it. So really when you're trying to use the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of a function, you're essentially just kind of using this formula here for what the definition of a derivative is which is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So there's really, you know, kind of two pieces to this that you want to kind of think about or figure out. This first piece here, which is f of x plus h, which essentially all that means is we're going to our function f and we're replacing all of our x's with x plus h. So basically what that means is we're going to go to our function. So if we look at our function f of x, Let's think about what f of x plus h is. We're basically just gonna take exactly what we have here, but we're gonna replace x with x plus h. So doing that will give us the square root of x plus h squared plus one. So this is f of x plus h. So the important thing to keep in mind when you're doing that is you wanna make sure to put x plus h in parentheses so that whatever operations are being done to x over here are now being done to this whole x plus h term over here. So it is really important that you're putting that in parentheses. Really that's a good thing to keep in mind with any sort of problem where you're finding the derivative using the definition because you need to make sure that any place where there was an x that has some operation happening on that x is now happening on the entire x plus h instead of, you know, if you forget those parentheses, it's going to cause something different to happen and it's not going to be right. When we're plugging this now into our formula here for f of x plus h, that's just going to basically give us the limit as h goes to zero of this whole thing here. So the square root of x plus h squared plus one minus f of x, which is the square root of x squared plus one, and then all that is gonna be over h. So again, something important to keep in mind. In this case, it didn't really make a difference, but in general, when you're doing this minus f of x, it's important to remember that you're subtracting your entire f of x function. So if you need to, make sure to put that in parentheses. If you have, if f of x is some sort of polynomial or something like that, not putting the parentheses around that is going to cause you to do something different because you need to make sure to subtract that entire function. Since our entire function here is a square root and everything is within this square root, these parentheses aren't really doing anything. And that's why I left them out in this case. But make sure to put those in. If you realize that they're not doing anything like they are here, you can get rid of them. But with something like a polynomial, they are going to be important because you're going to have to distribute the minus sign throughout the whole thing. But in this case, that is equivalent. So we'll go with this. So now the trick that we're gonna wanna use to find this limit, obviously we can't just like plug in h equals zero into here because we're gonna be dividing by zero. So what we wanna do is use the same trick that they, they used in the calculus lifesaver, which is to multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by basically the, the conjugate of this numerator, which essentially just means this same thing, but with a positive sign here instead of a negative sign. So if we do that, it's basically just gonna look like this. Right, so what this is gonna do is when we do this thing times this whole thing here, that is gonna be just like the difference of squares. So the difference of squares basically says if you have something squared minus something else squared, that would factor out to be a minus b 
times a plus b, right? But here we're doing the opposite. We have, imagine this is like a and this is b. So we have a minus b times a plus b. That's the same as each of these pieces squared, the difference of those. So basically, if we take this square root piece squared and this square root piece squared, the squared and the square root will cancel out. So all we're gonna be left with on our numerator is gonna be the limit as h goes to zero of x plus h squared plus one minus x squared plus one all over h times all this stuff that we had up here. Right, so this is where putting this in parentheses is important because now this minus has to distribute to each of these pieces here. So basically, using the difference of squares formula, we were able to get rid of all of our square roots on the numerator, so now we have no square roots, and then we just have h times all this stuff here. So let's take this, you know, the next step essentially at this point is just to kind of simplify our numerator here. So we'll basically just have to foil this out x plus h squared is the same as x plus h times x plus h. So we'd have to foil that out and we'll distribute this negative and just basically expand out our numerator and see what that leaves us with. So if we imagine x plus h times x plus h, doing those would be get x squared. This one times that would be xh h times x is another xh, and then the last one times the last one is h squared. So we're gonna get x squared plus two xh plus h squared. So that is what x plus h squared equals. So that'll give us the limit as h goes to zero of all that. So x squared plus two xh plus h squared and then we're gonna have plus one. And then let's clear this out and make some room over here. And then we're gonna have minus, this negative is gonna to distribute to each of these terms. So we're gonna get minus x squared and then minus one. Okay, and then our denominator we'll just leave as is for now. So h times So now let's just look at our numerator and think about what will cancel out, how this will simplify. So we have a plus one and a minus one, so those will cancel. We have x squared and minus x squared, so those will cancel. And now we're just left with two xh plus h squared. So now, this is a common trick with any sort of problem like this that you're trying to find the derivative using the definition. The issue that caused us to have to not you know not be able to just plug h equals zero into our limit was the fact that we had this h on the denominator here and we still do right if we were to just plug in h plug in zero for h we would get a zero on our denominator so our goal here is to get an h factored out of our numerator so that we can use that h to cancel the h on our denominator and now after all this kind of simplification you can see that both terms on our numerator here have an h. So in fact, we could actually pull h out of that. Pulling an h out of this term would leave us with 2x. Pulling an h out of h squared would leave us with h. So basically, if we have this now, now we have an h on the numerator and denominator, and those will cancel out. So now, we have something that we can just go ahead and plug zero in for h because doing that isn't gonna give us a zero on the denominator. It's gonna give us something that we can actually evaluate. So let's go ahead and do that. So putting zero in for h, we're gonna get two x on our numerator. And then on our denominator, x plus zero is just gonna be x. So we're just gonna have x squared plus one within our square root here. And then this square root is also just gonna be the square root of x squared plus one. So now we can combine these like terms, right? We just have the square root of x squared plus one plus the square root of x squared plus one. That's just two times the square root of x squared plus one. And now both our denominator and our numerator have a two, so those will cancel. And we'll just get 
x over the square root of x squared plus 1. So now this is f prime of x, right? We've essentially, you know you got your answer when there's no more h's left. You just want to have x's in your, your derivative. And if you were to use some other trick like chain rule, finding the derivative of this function would give you this function here. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Those are great ways to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this. Thank you and see you next time.